All right, welcome everybody to the frozen tundra of East Rutherford, New Jersey. I know it's not quite the frozen tundra of Lambeau Field, but I'll get there on Sunday, and I'm still not warmed up from 2007, so uh, that's why I'm out here in just a shirt and no jacket. I'm trying to be tough for the big game in Green Bay, the one you've been waiting for all year, ever since the Giants lost to the Packers 38-35 back on December 4th. The Packers were undefeated then. The Giants pushed them about as far as you can push them, played a great game, lost on a field goal as time expired, and there's a lot of feeling in this building right over there. You can't see it on camera, not that building, this building over here, that things are going to be different this time around. How can they be different? Well, we're going to give you three keys for the Giants to turn the tables and beat the pack. And number one, this probably is one of the lesser keys in the game, but it's important. They have to find a way to stop Jermichael Finley. I said this about Tony Gonzalez last week. I told you that some people were telling me the Giants are much better covering a tight end now than they used to be. Well, I'm sold now. Tony Gonzalez did nothing against them. Dustin Keller of the Jets did nothing. Jason Witten of the Cowboys did nothing. Jermichael Finley, though, had a great game against them the first time around, and he gave them trouble that even goes beyond the stats. Remember, Jaquan Williams' big pass interference penalty, illegal contact, actually, uh, on a big drive for the, in that game. That was key. Uh, they have to find a way to stop him. He, more than any other receiver, could really open things up. The second key for the Giants... This is probably pretty obvious. They have to pressure Aaron Rodgers. They did a little bit in the first game, not nearly enough. Aaron Rodgers was still well over 350 yards. The Packers had about 450 yards of offense. He's got just a ton of receivers to throw to. It, there's been games where he's thrown to 12 different targets. If he has time, he will pick apart this defense, whether it's man-to-man -man or whether it's zone. So the Giants have to pressure him. They got a, did a good job of forcing Matt Ryan to throw quickly against the Falcons. Obviously, they had 11 sacks in the two last regular season games. It's a different pass rush now that OCU and Yora is back, and they have to keep that going. You know, we just got to contain them in the pocket, you know. Don't let them get out and scramble on us. And, you know, we got to be physical up front. You know, it starts with up front end. That's basically what we got to do. You know, we can't go out there thinking we're going to hit home runs. You know, we got to contain them in the pocket, and all that is going to come. And the number three key, Eli Manning has to throw deep. I know the conventional wisdom here says run the ball because the Giants are running it well, slow things down, forget it. The Packers average more than 40 points per game at home, more than 35 points per game in, in the entire regular season. They are going to score, and the vulnerability of this 32nd-ranked Packers defense is deep. The Giants receivers talked about that all day. They know that they can find room to run if Eli gets some time. They think they can beat these guys downfield. They're a gambling secondary. They might make an interception or two, but there will be room for Hakeem Nix, Mario Manningham, and Victor Cruz to turn the tables with big plays. You know, in their secondary, at least, they like to gamble a lot. They like to take a lot of chances and risk, which means, uh, you know, they, they either win or they lose big, um, which which explains why they have, you know, lead the league in interceptions and, uh, you know, and lead the league in, in, uh, in uh, you know, giving up the big play. They're tops in the league and giving up a big play. So we understand that. We've seen it on film, and we see that, you know, there's different areas that we can take advantage of, and, and hopefully we can do that this, this Sunday. You know, with, with uh, especially with an offense like they have that's uh, – has the ability to score and score quickly. Uh, you know, you can't give them extra opportunities. You can't give them a short field. So uh, we got to take care of the football. We got to uh, capitalize when we have opportunities to hit big plays. But uh, being smart and and uh, you know don't don't turn the ball over. Uh, I think within their schemes of the defense, like in their in their coverages, uh, you know, corners like to guess a lot. They got their corners in their secondary. Like they like to guess a lot on on certain routes. And you can take advantage of it uh, with certain plays and, and the routes that you're running. Those are the three keys for the Giants to beat the Packers and incredibly advance to the NFC Championship game. And if that happens, we'll see you right back here next week on the blue screen. In the meantime, make sure you check in here Sunday for our live blog. And as always, follow at the blue screen on Twitter. And if you're going to Green Bay, stay warm. I know I will.